Hi, welcome back. We are on February 9th, 2022. And today we're going to be reading Exodus 29, Matthew 23, verses 1 through 36, and Psalm 33, 1 through 12, and Psalm 91. We're going to begin with prayer. <clears throat> Dear God, we humbly come to you We love you, Lord. We praise you and we thank you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your son who died on the cross. We thank you for your desire to have a relationship with us. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, I invite you in to do what only you can do. I ask you to help us discern today's reading, your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right. Today is February 9th, 2022, and we're going to start off with Exodus 29. Exodus 29. And this is Consecration of the Priests. Let me do it just 29. Yes, 29. This is what you are to do to consecrate them, so they may serve me as priests. Take a young bull and two rams without defect. And from fine wheat flour without yeast, make bread and cakes mixed with oil and wafers spread with oil. Put them in a basket and present them in it, along with the bull and the two rams. Then bring... Aaron and his sons to the entrance to the tent of, of meeting and wash them with water. Take the garments and dress Aaron with the tunic, the robe of ephod, the ephod itself, and the breast piece. Fasten the ephod on him by its skillfully woven waistband. Put the turban on his head and attach the sacred diadem to the turban. Take the anointing oil and anoint him by pouring it on his head. Bring his sons and dress them in tunics and put headbands on them. Then tie sh sashes on Aaron and his sons. The priesthood in their, is theirs by a lasting ordinance. In this way, you shall ordain Aaron and his sons. Bring the bull to the front of the tent of meeting, and Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands on its head. Slaughter it in the Lord's presence at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Take some of the bull's blood and put it on the horns of the altar with your finger and pour out the rest of it at the base of the altar. Okay. Why were there such detailed rituals in connection with these sacrifices? And these are the notes in my Bible because I'm just... I don't know the I I haven't read through the whole entire Bible, but I know that we don't do ritualistic killings today, or at least in our society, we don't do that. 
I don't know that it, if it goes on today. Um, but I'm just so curious to why and what was the meaning. I understand that it was different back then, that that was their money, that that was what they held, you know, that was how they took care of their families and stuff like that. So it says a centralized standard, um, it says why were there such detailed rituals in connection with these sacrifices? Partly it was for quality control. I thought that was very interesting. So they wanted it done in the presence of the Lord, partly because of quality control and specific to how it's done and where it's done for quality control. That makes sense to me. Um... A centralized, standardized form of worship prevented problems of belief which could arise from individuals creating their own worship. Also, it differentiated the Hebrews from the pagan Canaanites they would meet in the promised land. By closely following God's instructions, the Hebrews could not possibly join the Canaanites in their immoral religious practices. Finally, it showed Israel that God was serious about his relationship with them. So then that makes me think that if we don't have those practices today... 2022, maybe not, you know, killing a big beast at the entrance of a tabernacle, um, tent of meeting, in the presence of the Lord. But what practices do we have today um, to show that we're different from the world? What are our practices today? I'm not going to get off too much. <laughs> but that just, I, I had to stop and I had to read down there. And I thought it was interesting because I didn't even think about the quality control. And, and then I continued to read. So, uh, let's see. That was, take some of the bull's blood and put it on the horns of of the altar with your finger and pour out the rest of it at the base of the altar. Then take all of the fat around the inner parts, the covering of the liver and both kidneys with the fat on them and burn them at the altar. But burn the bull's flesh and its hide and its offal outside the camp. It is a sin offering. Take one of the rams, and Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands on its head. Slaughter it and take the blood and sprinkle it against the altar on all sides. Cut the ram into pieces and wash the inner parts and the legs, putting them with the head and the other pieces. Then burn the entire ram on the altar. It is a burnt offering to the Lord, a pleasing aroma, an offering made to the Lord by fire. And again, back then, what was a humane way to slaughter these animals? What were their practices? <clears throat> Take the other ram, and Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands on its head. Slaughter it. Take some of its blood and put it on the lobes of the right ears of Aaron and his sons on the thumbs of their right hands and on the big toes of their right feet. Then sprinkle blood against the altar on all sides and take some of the blood on the altar and some of the anointing oil and sprinkle it on Aaron and his garments and on his sons and their garments. Then he said, then he and his sons and their garments will be consecrated. And do we not do that because this is, the Old Testament and Jesus died on the cross for our sins and we live by grace now and we don't have to do all of these ritual things. Again, I don't know all the Bible. I'm, I'm going to learn a lot this year reading through the Bible. Um, did I grow up missing something that 
wasn't taught to me that is in here in the Bible that we're supposed to be doing today that we're not doing. I don't know. Take from this ram the fat, the fat tail, the fat around the inner parts, the covering of the liver, both kidneys with the fat on them, and the right thigh. This is the ram for the ordination. From the basket of the bread made without yeast, which is before the Lord, take a loaf and a cake made with oil and a wafer. Put all these in the hands of Aaron and his sons and wave them before the Lord as a wave offering. Then take them from their hands and burn them on the altar along with the burnt offering for a pleasing aroma to the Lord, an offering made to the Lord by fire. After you take the breast of the ram for Aaron's ordination, wave it before the Lord as a wave offering. Now, do wave offerings exist today? I've never heard of a wave offering. And it will be your share. Consecrate those parts of the ordination ram that belong to Aaron and his sons. The breast that was waved and the thigh that was presented. This is always to be the regular share from the Israelites from Aaron and his sons. It is the contribution the Israelites are to make to the Lord from their fellowship offerings. Aaron's sacred garments will belong to his descendants so that they can be anointed and ordained in them. The son who succeeds him as priest and comes to the tent of meeting to minister in the holy place is to wear them seven days. Take the ram for the ordination and cook the meat in the sacred place, in a sacred place. At the entrance to the tent of meeting, Aaron and his sons are to eat the meat of the ram and the bread that is in the basket. They are to eat these offerings by which atonement was made for their ordination and consecration. But no one else may eat them because they are sacred. And if any of the meat of the ordination ram or any bread is left over till morning, burn it up. It must not be eaten because it is sacred. Do for Aaron and his sons everything I have commanded you, taking seven days to ordain them. Sacrifice a bull each day as a sin offering to make atonement. Purify the altar by making atonement for it and anoint it to consecrate it. For seven days, make atonement for the altar and consecrate it. Then the altar will be most holy and whatever touches it will be holy. This is what you are to offer on the altar regularly each day. Two lambs a year old. Offer one in the morning and the other at twilight. With the first lamb, offer a tenth of an ephah of fine flour mixed with a quarter of a hin of oil from pressed olives and a quarter of a hin of wine as a drink offering. Sacrifice the other lamb at twilight with the same grain offering and its drink offering as in the morning. A pleasing aroma and offering made to the Lord by fire. For the generations to come, the burnt offering is to be made regularly at the entrance of the tent of meeting before the Lord. Now, when it says in here, for the generations to come, this burnt offering is to be made regularly at the entrance to the tent of meeting before the Lord. Does that mean in 2022 that we're supposed to be doing some of these things? Because it's been mentioned for generations to come for the generations to come this burnt offering is to be made regularly at the entrance of the tent of meeting before the lord well what is the tent of meeting today does the tent of meeting today exist again this might be a totally ignorant question for someone else that's watching this and following along, reading through their Bible that knows the Bible. And they're like, 
No, Sally. I don't know. I'm just asking. <clears throat> I'm trying to understand as I'm reading through the word and learning more about our history. And if I'm supposed to be doing something today, I, I want to try to obey. I want to be, be obedient to my Lord. So just asking, do you know? If you do, message me. Let me know. Uh, let's see. I'll just read that out. For the generations to come, this burnt offering is to be made regularly at the entrance to the tent of meeting before the Lord. There I will meet you and speak to you. There also I will meet with the Israelites and place, and the place will be consecrated by my glory. Because my God doesn't change. My God today is the same God of this. Back then, it's he doesn't change. So, because this world is Satan's world, are things hidden from us that we're supposed to be doing, that we're supposed to be saying, are we not doing them and therefore we're not being obedient? So I will consecrate the tent of meeting and the altar, and I will consecrate Aaron and his sons to serve me as priests. Then I will dwell among the Israelites and be their God. They will know that I am the Lord their God who brought them out of Egypt so that I might dwell among them. I am the Lord their God. Amen. And that concludes... <sighs> Exodus 29, Exodus 29. Now we're going to move on to Matthew 23, verses 1 through 36. Matthew 23, 1 through 36. Which... Stops right there. Okay. Jesus warns against the religious leaders. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. You must obey them and do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy loads and put them on men's shoulders but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for men to see. They make their phylacteries wide and their tassels on their garments long. They love the place of honor and banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. They love to be greeted in the marketplace and have men call them rabbi. But you are not to be called a rabbi, for you have only one master, and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father, and he is in heaven. Okay, now this is New Testament. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father and he is in heaven. Hmm. Nor are you to be called teacher for you have one teacher, the Christ. The greatest among you will be your servant for whoever exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. This is very interesting. So we're not supposed to call anybody father or teacher. This is out of Matthew. Let's see what my notes say. There's nine. It doesn't say. Hmm. Mm. 
Mm, it doesn't talk about that specifically. But this, again, is in red. So Jesus spoke these words. And I know, again, I, I say this, that during transcription, that words could have been lost, meanings could be shifted, but God's word is holy and living. It is alive. So if Jesus says, do not call anybody your father and do not call anybody, nor are you to be called teacher. You only have one teacher and that is Christ. This is very interesting. I've never caught that. I even have it underlined here um, from another time that I read it or maybe in church or whatever. Very interesting. Jesus condemns the religious leaders. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You shut the kingdom of heaven in men's faces. You yourselves do not enter, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You travel over land and sea to win a single convert. And when he becomes one, you make him twice as much as a son of hell as you are. Woe to you, blind guides. You say, if anyone swears by the temple, it means nothing. But if anyone swears by the gold of the temple, he is bound by his oath. You blind fools, which is greater, the gold or the temple that makes the gold sacred? You also say, if anyone swears by the altar, it means nothing. But if anyone swears by the gift on it, he is bound by his oath. You blind men, which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred? Therefore, he who swears by the altar swears by it and everything on it. And he who swears by the temple swears by it and by the one who dwells in it. And he who swears by the heaven swears by God's throne and by the one who sits on it. Woe to you, teachers of law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practice the latter without neglecting the former. You blind guides, you strain out a gnat, but swallow a camel. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Hmm. Blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside will be clean. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of dead men's bones and everything unclean. The same way on the outside you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. <clears throat> Woe to you. Teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites, you build tombs for the prophets and decorate the graves of the righteous. And you say, if we had lived in the days of our forefathers, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. So you testify against yourselves that you are the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of the sin of your forefathers, you snakes. You brood of vipers. How will you escape being condemned to the hell? Therefore, I am sending you prophets a wise men, and wise men and teachers. See, he would. Okay. He just said, now am I thinking too literally? He just said, do not call, be called teachers. And then he says, 
in chapter uh, verse 34, I am sending you prophets and wise men and teachers. <sighs> I'm confused. I know sometimes I think literally, but if we're not supposed to be called teachers, then who's... So, can God call people teachers? Is that what it's saying? It's okay? Some of them you will kill and crucify. Others you will flog in your synagogues and pursue from town to town. And so upon you will come all the righteous blood that has been shed on earth from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. I tell you the truth, all this will come upon this generation. And that concludes our Matthew 23... One through 36. Then we're going to move on to Psalm 33, 1 through 12. Psalm 33, 1 through 12. Psalm 33. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lure. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully the shout of joy. Shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars. He puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the of the peoples but the plan of the lord stand firm forever the purpose of his heart through all generations blessed is the nation whose god is the lord the people he chose for his inheritance Okay, and Psalm 91, our fave, Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes. And see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord who is my ref refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. 
Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. 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 Well, thank you for joining me today, February 9th, 2022. We have made good progress tonight in catching up. Thank you for following along. I hope that you have a blessed day.